Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> this is Dan Wells coming to you again today live from behind the scenes. This is, you can see behind us, the uh, production center for our uh, movie, for the serial killer movie. And you can tell by the kind of beautiful pink walls that this is the Viking room. Um, I'm sitting here with Jack, who is uh, one of our awesome people working on this movie. Jack, tell us a little bit who you are, what your role is on this production. I am the line producer on this production. So initially I was responsible for hiring all the crew and arranging travel and hotel with my production coordinator and of course all of the food and getting people to and from set and from location to location and just the day-to-day -day operations of running a film set. Yeah, so essentially she's the most important person here. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> my primary experience um, with, with movie making thus far is a couple nights ago when we were out uh, filming a one of the kill scenes in the middle of like sub-arctic temperatures and everyone was dying and Jack was basically yelling at everyone saying, you're not supposed to stand there. That person needs a blanket. We're all going to die. <laughs> like it was, it was great. So. I think I said, please. Yes. Was, <laughs> at first. Please, Eventually there was no time it. for please. <laughs> anyway, so she's awesome. And I thought it would be really fun uh, for you guys very quickly to uh, kind of give you a sense of, of what it's like behind the scenes. I've talked a lot about the cast and the actors that we have working with us, but really you know, the all of the really meaty stuff that makes a movie happen comes from people like Jack who are behind the scenes making this all work. So um, let me ask you first uh, very quickly, what, uh, what how, how did you get involved with, with this production in particular? The producers who are mostly UK based uh, came to Minneapolis to scout and to set up shop and they had no idea where to go for camera equipment or grip electric equipment or who was who for crew in our area. So they went to our film board and asked them for names of local line producers and unit production managers. And I met with the one of the producers, UK producers, and he hired me on the spot pretty much. Awesome. <laughs> and then I just hit the ground running. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I started as a production assistant mm -hmm. on an Alexander Payne film way back in 1997. I did uh, the film election with Reese Witherspoon and Matthew oh, Broderick. Cool. So I started as a PA, and which is a great way to start because you get to learn about all of set operations and what all the other departments do. And as a line producer and a production manager, it's really important that you know the needs of each department because sometimes when they're busy, they might overlook their own needs and you have to make sure you're oh, running okay. your own checklist or you're not, <laughs> you know, in Virginia, Minnesota, three and a half hours from a major city center and, you know, you forgot your camera magazine or mm -hmm. you know so no no you're based in in the minneapolis area yep which i am learning is apparently there there's quite a movie making little community up here we do a lot of indie films in okay. minneapolis uh micro budget mostly under a million dollars and we do a lot of TV. I like, work on a ton of television commercials, and we're doing a lot of episodic television as well in Minneapolis. Okay, like uh, I know that uh, we've talked with a bunch of people on the Fargo TV show and things like that. Like, what, what what kind of stuff have you worked on in the past? Actually, where might people have seen your work? Well, my first film, Out of the Gate, I was very lucky. It was. Alexander Payne's election, mm -hmm. which did really well. And then I got to work on an Ang Lee mm -hmm. film, and I got Ooh, to which one? work on um, Ride with the Devil, which was so shot in Missouri right after election, actually. Okay. So I kind of started out hot out of the gate. And I actually, believe it or not, shot another film in this Virginia, Minnesota area just five months ago with a crew from LA and New York called The Blood Stripe. Uh, and it's 
stars, a couple of people who are on The Nick, which is Steven Soderbergh's film now, mm, okay. uh, Chris Sullivan and Tom Lipinski and uh, Remy Abergenois directed it and he can be seen in The Good Wife and he just got cast in David Fincher's new TV series for HBO, but he's an actor, writer, director. Mm -hmm. And that's based on a female uh, war vet who comes home after several tours of duty and is having a hard time reacclimating to small town Minnesota life. And that was actually here and on the Iron Range of Minnesota just cool. five months ago. Awesome. So let me ask then, our movie in particular, has it presented any special challenges or a unique situation that you're like, I've never had to deal with this weird thing before? <laughs> You or is it all I pretty love. much normal? I love the creature team. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of new to me. There's a lot of special effects. And just the caliber of talent of our creature team. I think we're so lucky. And uh, the location change. You know, we were going to shoot all of it on the Iron Range. Then we're going to shoot all of it in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Then we were going to split. But, you know, our director just fell in love with the range. I think when you see the movie, you will see it is... A city, Virginia, Minnesota, is a city trapped in time. It's like walking onto a back lot of a movie studio. It is. <laughs> really, there's it is. And, like it. And, and in addition to that kind of old, nostalgic, kind of small town America look to it, it's also very unique in that it has this really funky steam system right. running through everything. And so it almost feels like you're walking around in a Scorsese movie set in a really it small really town. It really does. Because there's like steam coming up out of the ground just for no reason. It's, it's kind of ominous. It's like we're it over the adds. crust of hell. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So right behind me, over on this side, you can see that little door right there leads into the other half of this ballroom, which is where uh, the wardrobe is and where the creature team is. Uh, and that is uh, uh, basically Todd Jones is in there, you know, constantly making all these cool little practical effects of demon claws and stuff and that's what and the black goo about. don't forget about the black, the black goo. goo the black goo <laughs> um, <laughs> he's making the black goo yes the the black goo from the story so anytime there's a kill scene you know uh we have to have we have to make sure that there's plenty of you know buckets of blood and they're running around out freezing in the cold with one bucket of blood and then one bucket of black goo to dribble around and make sure it looks all really cool. And even the shadows, because we don't want to reveal the the monster too soon. Mm -hmm. So he's creating all of these branch shadows and configuring winter gear hats with shadows so you can see like a teaser. Yeah, we're going very subtle on the effects. There's They're everywhere, but you know, you won't really get a really good look at any of them in the movie until, I guess, maybe the very last scene when you see the monster in the mortuary. So, But the ones we've shot so far look really cool. They look, it looks awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, we don't want to take a ton of time. She has very important work to get back to. Uh, so is, is there anything else you want to say before we close? I can't wait to do Mr. Monster next. So <laughs> we better get working on it. I know. So everyone buy a ticket to this one. Exactly. When it comes out. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Jack. And uh, thank you for everyone for listening. And we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.